So we are Badger Builds Contracting, representing UW Stout, um, and we're going to be presenting the Epic in Dallas, Texas. Shoot. Ryan. Uh, my name is Ryan Hartz. I'm the project executive. I'm Alex Blake, project manager. And I'm Bronson O'Shell. I'm the quality control manager. All right. How do we go to the next slide? There we go. All right. So we were founded in 1926 in Menominee, Wisconsin. We are licensed to work in 48 states. Um, our primary focus is commercial construction, and currently we employ 1,000 people across the U.S. Uh, some of our past projects we've done is the Granite Place at Village Center in Colorado. It's a 300,000 square foot office building that has a six level parking garage. Uh, we completed that one in 2017. Uh, another unique one we did was the Triangle Building right by Union Station in Denver. It's shaped as a triangle to fit a, a specific site that it's on from about a property line to property line on all sides. Building it as the triangle shape was able to give 20% more window offices than a regular building would be. Uh, we completed that one in 2015. And the last one we have up there is the Denver International Airport Hotel and Transit Center, which is a 519 room hotel on top of a transit center with a lot of unique curtain walls that we completed in 2016. All of these projects being LEED Gold certified. We'll jump right into our estimate here. Our guaranteed maximum price amount is $65,712,259. And that's for complete corn shell construction. Uh, all tenant build outs should be done by third party contractors as per the RFP. And um, Badger Builds has deep ties to the Dallas area, and we've worked here for numerous years. And then we've built uh, very good subcontractor relationships over these years, and we use that to get you the best bang for your buck on your project. And we've also come up with a handful of value engineering options for this project. The curtain wall glass, seeing how each floor has uh, its own window shades, we can use a lighter colored glass and save a little bit of money. And also the metal panels around the exterior of the building. Uh, we can look at a uh, Nietzsche hot panel that is like a third of the cost. And I think that'd be some good options for you guys in putting together this building. So as we said, Badger Builds is headquartered in Menominee, Wisconsin. We have offices around the country, including one just outside of Dallas and Irving, Texas. Uh, for this project, for the disadvantaged businesses, we are targeting 25%, which should be easily doable as we've worked with a lot of these smaller companies before and they do a lot of good work. On this project, we'll be self-performing the concrete, which is a large portion of this project. And Doing that ourselves will allow us to be able to keep control of the project, keeping the timeline as it should be. Um, Badger Builds is big on using BIM technology. Uh, we use a lot of virtual reality so we can keep the owner up to date throughout the project and they can walk through it without ha actually having to walk through the site so they know what's going on, as well as using clash prevention for the trades from the beginning so we can try to predict any issues and solve them before the construction starts. Uh, for LEED on this project, we're going for the LEED Gold Certified. We have a large emphasis on environmental sustainability and have a history of completing a lot of LEED certified projects. All of our project managers receive the LEED training so they know what's going on. As for site utilization, uh, the one on the left is the site utilization. You can see all of our laydown areas. The green is the delivery in between the laydown area and the project site as well as the exits. Off to the right, it shows the hoisting plan with the tower cranes. There'll be one tower crane, a little bit smaller one that is kind of in the middle of the parking garage area that'll be there until the parking garage is complete. And the one on the southeast side corner of the building will be there almost the duration of the project until the whole building is closed off. All right, here are some of our key scheduled milestones for this project. Overall, we have a 14 month duration. Following the notice to proceed on April 19th of 2021, uh, we will complete our superstructure in March of next year. And the interior finishes and MEP reference will follow. And our substantial completion date is 6 6 2022. 
for the quality control in the project, we'll have a full-time on-site quality control manager. They will be uh, fully responsible for all of the quality control documents and procedures that take place on the project, as well as during the uh, pre-construction process and the planning process. Um, for on the project, we're going to set action standards on important parts of work. So what these are is these are standards that we set above and beyond the spe or the, spe uh, the specs on the project. And uh, what they're for is they make sure that we get nowhere near the specification requirements and that we exceed uh, all expectations. It'd be for like if a concrete test fails and we need to take down that portion of the project, it significantly impacts the schedule. So we set our own action standards to make sure that nothing like that will happen. We will also carry out pre-installation meetings. So these meetings will be held before a, a large scope of work occurs. All subcontractors and people involved with that scope of work will attend the meeting. And it's where we can set our quality control standards and any type of uh, items that we feel like we need to pay extra um, close attention to during the process of that scope of work. Another item we do is a pre-punch list procedure. And what that is, is before the punch list even occurs, we do our own punch list to ensure that we catch all of the mistakes that are easily uh, seeable through our uh, specialists. And then we can take care of those uh, items before the architect even comes into the building. This significantly decreases the size of the punch list for the architect and also decreases the amount of time after the punch list to while the building is fully complete. Another item that we paid a lot of close attention to on this project is the concrete quality control. Uh, this building obviously has a large amount of concrete. So one of the items that we did to help assist with this project is we uh, consulted with a structural engineer who specializes in concrete and he helped us design a mixed control or mixed design that uh, is fit the best for the project. It helps excel our schedule and the amount of time that it takes for us to uh, complete the concrete part of the project as well as it over engineered the mixed design so that we have no quality control problems as far as the strength of the concrete. We also will cooperate with local members to make sure that the fire chief, local inspectors, everybody is well aware of what's happening on the project as well as what is expected out of them and expected out of us. So here is two quality control documents that we have uh, attached with the RFP. The one on the left is the daily concrete inspection report. This will be carried out by the concrete inspector to ensure that everything is documented about that day. So then if anything questions come up further down the line, we have every single day's report. It goes everywhere from weather to temperatures to anything noticed by the inspector. There's a large uh, range of items on that sheet. So it kind of gives a full uh, idea of what occurred that day. Another uh, one on the right is a non-confirmation or, or non-conformance report. So what that is, is that is when the um, quality control manager is walking on the site, he sees anything off, he fills out that report and then that gets brought up in the meeting and it's handled properly. So site specific safety, a little bit about our uh, safety and health indoctrination. Um, here at Badger Builds, we have a huge focus on community safety. Um, especially like a project like this, downtown Dallas, we have everything from sidewalks to busy streets to railways to deliveries coming in and out. Um, community safety is our biggest priority. Um, kind of going off of that, awareness is another big thing that Badger Builds um, talks about all the time, uh, whether it's uh, pre-construction meetings, ownership meetings, um, toolbox talks on toolbox talks on site, um, just making awareness of uh, high risk activities in the future um, is is the biggest form of prevention. Um, the SAP program, this is the sidewalk awareness program. This is a program that we invested into. And basically what this is, is a, a trailer we outfitted with um, all of our uh, sidewalk signage, overhead netting, and anything that can keep the, uh, the sidewalks in the community safe. It was something that really stuck and um, something we're proud of and great uh, community recognition. Uh, correcting safety and health violations. Uh, as far as hazardous situations go, uh, in the event of a hazardous situation, personnel will be immediately removed and hospitalized if necessary. Um, the hazard will be made safe and recorded and hazardous situations will be outlined in the next meeting with safety managers, job suits, job suits and PMs. Um, substance abuse policy. 
Um, we have zero tolerance on drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. Um, in the event of someone getting caught or possession with any of these things, uh, there will be an immediate 30-day suspension from work. The situation will be evaluated between PM, job suit, um, hospital if necessary, and the safety manager. Um, anytime there's an incident of $500 or more in damage, um, drug and alcohol testing will uh, go into effect. Also, random drug tests are a big part of what we do at Badger Builds Contracting. And then pre-phase planning. Um, so the safety director is with the job from start to finish. This is all the way from the preliminary stages to out on site of the project. Um, we feel it's the best way for safety to make, to make sure safety is a top priority throughout the project. Um, so in the pre-construction phase, we have drawings on the safety manager's desk and um, he's going to be talking about high risk um, activities from the get go all the way through job completion. And there's a very close relationship between our job soups and project managers and uh, safety managers. So Badger Builds would like to thank you for considering us for this project and we hope you make the best decision. Thank you. Great job. Okay, Tommy, I will go ahead through the line. I'm going to start with Amanda for questions. Amanda, I'm going to go ahead um, and unmute you. Oh, looks like you did it. Sure. Hey, good job, guys. Um, I uh, At the very beginning, you guys spoke a lot of some Colorado past projects. Um, what local projects have you guys completed in the Texas area? Um, we worked on a Microsoft data center just outside of Dallas previously. That's one of our biggest ones we've done out there. Now, we didn't mention that one specifically because more of the ones we've done that are big glazing have been in that Colorado area. 10-4. Um, how about you guys talked a little bit about um, the QC process and I'm, I'm curious, you talked about punch list. What program do you guys intend to use for punch list? And will you be training the owners um, in our group on how to use that? Yeah, so for tracking the punch list, we use Procore and we will make sure that the uh, owner and uh, architect and everybody is properly uh, trained in on it and uh, make sure that they have access and that we are there for any questions or any issues that are through the punch list process. Okay. And then, so going back to, to the curtain wall um, in Colorado, do you guys feel that that's the highest risk feature on this project or what is the, the biggest risk you guys see on this uh, EPIC project? Uh, we see the curtain wall being the highest risk on this project for the sole fact that you're working on the exterior of the building and you're 16 stories off the ground and dealing with glass that big sheets of glass if a gust the wind comes that could accidentally get grabbed behind it and cause a lot of issues so that's the biggest um is that also the longest lead time what's the lead time you guys are seeing on the glass absolutely we're looking at at least 90 days lead time for curtain wall glass right now Okay, sounds good. Um, Haley, I'll, I'll pass it off to Tommy. Okay, go ahead, Tommy. All right, hopefully everyone can hear me. Uh, sound check. Um, so looking at your all schedule, your schedule was uh, 303 days. It's the shortest one that we've seen so far. Um, where do you think you all have been able to pick up some efficiency um, that other teams might not have? or other proposing teams might not have uh, captured? The biggest area where we were able to make up time on this project is in concrete. We're able to get through a floor about every six days, and we actually kind of think that might be a little bit slow. With our improved mix design and everything else regarding our concrete, uh, it sets really fast, so we're able to, it gains its strength um, in approximately 24 hours, it gains three quarters of its strength. So we're able to really move through floors, set um, new forms for the next floor, and we leave the shoring on the previous three or four floors just to make sure our concrete is fully cured. All right, thank you for that. Um, one 
one follow-on question from a, a safety standpoint. We've, we've got a rail line that's adjacent to the job site. Um, can you elaborate on your safety you know, plan for protecting that, that rail line from the work? Um, sure, yeah, no, so there's going to be at least one safety manager on site at all times. Um, we'll have specific people designated to traffic control and railway safety, and this isn't only for our workers, but this is for the, um, the community members as well. Um, and kind of going back to our, our SAP or SAP program, um, incorporating extra um, attention to the community awareness within the sidewalks, railways, um, that type of stuff. All right, thank you for that. Haley, I'll, I'll let another judge jump on and ask some questions. Hey guys, this is Brent. Um, quick question for you guys. You guys talked a lot about the risk mitigation or risks along with the, the curtain wall glass uh, system. What testing procedures or what um, what are you guys going to do to ensure this thing stays watertight? Uh, for the testing of the curtain wall, we're going to actually hire our own uh, third party curtain wall inspector to uh, ensure that it is watertight. And then we're also going to carry out all of the proper water tests, um, you know, all of the procedures as far as hosing it down, making sure there's no leaks, uh, all of the processes like that. But uh, we're going to bring in a third party agency as well to uh, make sure that there's no uh, type of questions as far as the curtain wall, as it is such an important part of the project. Do you guys, awesome, great. Do you guys plan on doing a mock-up prior to actually building the, bringing the, you know, the curtain wall off the site and hanging it on the building? Yep, yes. yep. There will be a mock-up constructed and that has been included as part of the price and uh, it will be built per the specs. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Chris, do you want to jump on? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yep, we yep. can hear you. Okay. Uh, first question, uh, in your initial proposal, uh, your at-risk proposal was roughly $89 million, and then your best and final offer was $65 million, which is a significant reduction of over 25% of your initial proposal. Can you explain uh, what you saw and the amendments and everything that led you to reduce your price by over 25 percent? Uh, a lot of that has to do with the value engineering we've looked into. We found significant cost savings in the HVAC, uh, plumbing, curtain wall, um, what else? And well, concrete too, because we self perform that, so we were able to cut some costs on our concrete number as well. But value engineering is where we were able to make up the majority of that cost. Speaking of your concrete, um, you guys are planning on self performing the concrete frame, is that correct? Yes. I have you guys performed any mid rise framework? In the Dallas or Texas market of at least 12 stories or more? Uh, not recently, no. Okay. Uh, and are you able to confirm that your concrete number, you are you feel confident that you have all the material equipment labor hoisting for it as it is uh, not what we are used to seeing in this market? Uh, we are confident in our number 100%. Okay. And your craft, will you be, where is your craft coming for for this project if you have not done work in the Texas region with frames recently. Are you bringing those guys or planning hiring locally? Uh, we'll hire as many as we can locally and then bring in the rest from the upper Midwest. Okay, thank you. 
Jake, did you want to ask any questions? No, I was I was going to ask pretty much a similar question. Is your plan is to self perform concrete? You know, what was the reasoning behind when you uh, had received a few competitive bids for some subs? Um, but it seems like you guys answered that very confidently. Hey, Haley, I've got one more question. Um, yep. Can you guys walk me through your crane plan on this project and how you chose the type of crane that you did? All right, yeah, we chose the original power crane that's on the southeast corner of it. That was going to be originally go with the one, but in order to reach the farthest corner of it for picking up the uh, forming, it was going to be a stretch on if it'd be able to handle it, which is why we added the second one. And um, then having the second one in there, we're able to keep things more efficient because you can have both of them working at the same time. And the one will be substantially higher than the other one, so they won't be interfering with each other as they work. And then the one through the parking garage will be, I'll mainly focus on that end of the parking garage, and it'll be able to lift stuff from the layout area over there. And then that one will get removed as soon as that sixth floor is done being formed. It'll fill in the gap that it was in and we'll finish the project with the taller one. So can you tell me how long each one will be on site? Seven months for the shorter one and I believe 10 months for the tallest one. Okay, and you guys did some some review, and it's it's more cost efficient to do the tower crane as opposed to a crawler. Yes, and due to the tight sight lines and trying not to interfere with the abatement on the site next to us and the future construction that's going to uh, start, is easier to just keep them in the stationary position rather than trying to walk them around the project. Okay, sounds good. Hey guys, I got a, I got another one. So the, is this unitized curtain wall system going to stick build it outside the building? Can you repeat the question? Is it unitized? Is this unitized curtain wall system or are you going to stick build it? It's unitized. Okay. And the, the cranes that you have coming is those are primarily just for for glass hoisting, right? Or do you guys have some sort of schedule built out for trades A through A through B have this hours is primarily for hoisting glass. Yep, uh, our material hoisting happens off hours, and we will set the glass with a smaller davit crane. Okay. Any final questions? <laughs> Haley, this is Tommy. I've got one more. Okay. Um, on your estimate, um, we realized we realized we didn't give you all the line items to indicate uh, where you're carrying your GL insurance. Um, can you confirm you all have GL insurance included and let us know uh, what you think that amount might be? Ballpark? Uh, it should be in the $250,000 range. It should be included. Okay, thank you for that. Hey Lee, I have one That's additional all. question on the coordination between topping out with concrete and the glazing erection. Can you, uh, when do you plan on starting the glazing erection and where will you be uh, and your concrete schedule when you start your glazing erection? Um, I'd have to get really deep in that schedule look, but I believe we're on like the 14th floor. That's wherever that first bump out is, that's when we're going to start glazing because that edge will be protected and we're able to start there. Okay. But we will be pouring in the 14th After floor. After out, do you finish your skin erection? Um, we'll finish the glazing mid-March of 2022. Topping out, I believe, was in January. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah.
all done, judges? That's all I have, Haley. Okay. All right. Congratulations, guys. Way to go. And uh, we will talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you.